My grandson is horrified of the police now. I was left on the side of the road with no keys, and it was dark, and I was by myself. I just knew I was going to die. Boy, you took them. No, man. What yes, you did. You took the keys, man? No, sir. She, she left her out she here like, by herself, man. She just it was abandoned right here. You just not coming back. We're going to deal, well, deal with this. Well, We're going to deal with this, brother. We're going to deal with this. What's your name? What's your name? That cell phone video shows just one of thousands of encounters the Brookside, Alabama Police Department used to generate revenue for itself. Drivers are harassed, sometimes arrested, and usually see their cars towed away. Police have left families and small children stranded on the side of the road. The victims of Brookside's policing for profit scheme often live paycheck to paycheck and struggle to fight back. Officers look for any reason to pull over drivers and sometimes just make one up. I know I had my turn signal on. Like I said, when he pulled me over, I was in shock because I didn't think he was pulling me over. He said that he was pulling me over because my lights weren't on. So the police pulled me over because they said I was tailgating when in reality, I was just following my boyfriend, but he said we were too close. I first saw the police car on the opposite side of the freeway. Um, he got on the side of the freeway where I was and he followed me all the way down to where I was pulled over at, right down here. And I said, for what? What did I do? Is there anything that I did that was wrong? And he had his hand on his holster and he said, you're casting your lights. And I was like, didn't even know what casting your lights was. I'm like, casting my lights? What are you talking about? Brookside's traffic stops are engineered to tow cars away for the financial benefit of the town and a private towing company. For example, Officers regularly refuse to accept drivers' proof of insurance. I tried to show him the State Farm insurance card that I had on my phone, and he said that he wasn't going to accept that. No, they wouldn't accept the, the paperwork that my wife showed him with my policy number on it. And they, I guess that wasn't good enough. When he told me I didn't have insurance on my vehicle, I'm like, dude, you kidding me? I do this for a living. I work for an auto insurance company now for 23 years. Often, the tow truck pulls up just seconds after the stop. And this thing I knew, a uh, um, tow truck flew by me. I mean, flew by. I didn't think anything of it. I'm thinking he going somewhere. He bad back so quick. And I said, well, what's going on? He said, we towing your car. I said, for what? They left me, my wife, and my kids on the side of the road. So when he pulled me over and they finna tow my vehicle, they leaving me stranded on Cherry Avenue. No street lights. Me, my four-year-old grandson, and my daughter. Jory's car wasn't towed. Instead, she was left stranded in the dark when police drove off with her keys. Her father eventually reached someone at the department, but when an officer returned, he denied they took the keys, even as he handed them back to Jory's father. Boy, you took them. No, man. Yes, you, you did. You took the keys, man? No, sir. You she, left her out she here like, by herself, man. Yeah, she just it was abandoned right why here. Why you just not coming back? Well, because we just found the keys, man. And how you just Come not on. found the keys? On. We, we're going to deal, okay. deal with this. We're going to deal with this, brother. While pursuing revenue, officers have physically abused drivers and humiliated them. For many people, the abuse didn't end on the side of the road. Shakitha Grant hurried to the scene where police had pulled over her daughter. When I pulled up to the scene where my daughter was in and they were searching my car, I did not see her. So therefore, I started to get worried about where she is and what they were doing with her. And I asked the police officer, you know, where's my daughter? And he was like, uh, well, she's all right. I, was, I didn't ask you if she's all right. I asked you where she is. He grabbed me, threw me down on the, on the hood of my mom's car. They tore my phone out of my hand and smashed it against the car. They took me to the police station. They strip searched me and then put me in the cell with a man. Sandra Harris was targeted simply for turning on her headlights as the sun went down. Concerned for her own safety, she asked for a supervisor to come. They both put me in handcuffs and put me in the car, and he searched my car. And I was two days, three days short of about to have my surgery, and I had a prescription bottle of antibiotics. The one officer got back in the car. He said, yeah, I bet you're a drug dealer. 
Sandra was taken to Brookside Jail, where her nightmarish ordeal continued. Officer told me that I had to strip, take off my clothes, and make sure I didn't have any drugs. So she came in, and they had it on camera, because they have cameras in the jail cell. And she handed me a Dollar General bag, and she said, I want you to take all of your clothes off. For Brookside's victims, bonding out of jail or paying a fee to get their car out of impound is just the beginning. Next, they must go to Brookside's town court, where a judge and prosecutor have seen their salaries double as the ticketing scheme took off in this small town. I was very much surprised because when we drove up, it was about 150 people there waiting for court. I got down there like 8 o'clock that morning. I never seen so many people waiting to go to court in my life. It was around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon before they even called me. I didn't leave from down there till 5 p.m. The town's ticketing and towing scheme is making Brookside rich at the expense of innocent people, many living paycheck to paycheck. I had to go get money from my father because I didn't get paid till that Friday. To get out of jail, we paid over $800. So even though I did nothing wrong and my charge was dropped, I still had to pay almost $1,000 to Brookside, to the courts, to the towing company to get my car back. Proceeds from the fines and towing fees don't go to fixing Brookside's roads or repairing streetlights. They go right back into the police force that has come to look more and more like an army unit. For a sleepy town of 1,200 residents, the department purchased semi-automatic weapons with laser sights. They secured a mine-resistant vehicle, which residents dubbed the town tank. Newly purchased SUVs were painted matte black, and they even started a canine unit and named their dog Cash. The justice system is supposed to be about protecting the public, not turning a profit for the government. The abuse in Brookside is the inevitable result of treating vulnerable residents like walking, talking ATMs. Across the country, cities rely on fines, fees, and court costs to line city and police department budgets. The Institute for Justice filed a federal class action lawsuit to end Brookside's abuses, seek compensation for the town's victims, and ensure that there are no more Brooksides. I am fighting back for me and my daughter Alexis because we were humiliated by Brookside Police Department and they need to be held accountable. If you got the audacity to pull over innocent, hardworking people for nothing, then yeah, you, you don't need to be a police officer. Nobody should have to go through what I went through, so I think that's the main reason that we should be fighting back because there's so many people out there with stories like mine and nobody should have to deal with it.